Welcome back to the Inside Track. A little noisy on the set today after the classic. My guest is the voice of Monticello Raceway. Monticello Raceway track announcer Jerry Glantz making his second appearance on the Inside yes. Track. It's a big thrill the second time <laughs> around, too. And uh, can we, before we start, to get it all out of the way, can we just show everybody all the jewelry <laughs> before we start? There it is. There it is, all there the jewelry. Let's get it out of the it's way. better so than we... a cigar. <laughs> I don't want to take you after Manzi. So we can, talk, we can talk about <laughs> the raceway. Uh, classic 7, Sunday, August 2nd at Monticello. It was your third classic. What did you think before the race? How did you set up the race in looking over the post parade, looking over the program? Probably the most competitive field we've ever had in the Classic and when you have a 10 horse field racing luck is a good 50 percent of it. You have to have the horse but a guy like Warren Cameron he knew that from his post position he had to get parked. There was no way that he could make the front with brokers cash and penman from the rail and the two hole and yet if he looks for a hole way back and comes off the gate, he was dead anyway because then he's too far out. So in a race like that, you have to set yourself up. When you leave, you just relax going out of there. Let everybody kind of fall into their spots and instinct. Good drivers come right to the top. Now, you had picked Freedom Fella before the race. Why did you like Freedom Fella over the betting choice, one of the betting choices, which was Brand New Fella? Okay, it's been a long year for all these horses. Even though, say, Brandon Fellas had about 12 races, every single race has been fast. He's been in 155 at the Meadowlands. He's been parked a mile at Monticello and 1 in 58 in the mud. Constantly urged and always asked for his ultimate. And in, in this case, his last race, which had been two weeks prior, he had come up short. Even though the line looks impressive, parked a mile, closing seven lanes, in a 10-horse field, or I think, I'm sorry, it was 12-horse field, to, for, the, for a horse of his caliber to finish ninth just showed me that he was not on top of his game. I just thought he may be a little tired. And Freedom Fella had showed that he was peaking. I mean, he is right now the best that he has ever been. Before the race, what goes through your mind knowing that this is the biggest race of the year and you're calling the biggest race of the year? You have called Niatros' last race. You've called two classics. What goes through your mind at, from the announcing standpoint? Nothing really special as far as preparation or anything. It's just that it's nice to get up. There's a certain adrenaline. We had more people than we usually have, which is always nice. And from hearing the excitement in the crowd, it gets me up. And it's the buildup. I'm sure that the people can notice the difference between the call of a classic and 155 than that of a three claimer. That's all, you know, it's just that uh, good horses, good racing, competition all the way around the track. And, uh, and, the, uh, and the chance for me to say the second quarter in 29 and 1 instead of 33 and 2. Okay, so let's uh, set the stage for you and let you hear that call that Jerry made yesterday in the, or on Sunday. We tape on Monday, so it was yesterday. Classic Sunday, Sunday, August 2nd, race number 7. And for the call, let's go upstairs. They're off and pacing. Freedom Fellow going for the lead with Broker's Cash. Penman at the rail. On the outside, brand new fella. Into the first turn, Penman has the early lead. Broker's Cash dropping in second, Leopard third. Freedom fella, the outside fourth, Doc's fella fifth. Brand new fella parked out six, Bobo seventh. Ombro Whiskey is eight, three wide, Whitey's fella, the trailer, New York motoring. Penman's gonna take him by the quarter pole in 28 flat. Racing into the paddock turn, Penman with a lead. Broker's cash right out of the two hole to challenge. Freedom Fella gets the cover third. Leopard at the rail fourth. Brand new Fella right there fifth. Docks Fella sixth. Ombro Whiskey seventh. Bobo eighth. New York Motoring ninth. Whitey's Fella still three wide tenth. They come to the half mile. Penman and Del Insco. Broker's cash on the outside. Freedom Fella right there third. The half mile in 57 and 1. Second quarter 29 and 1. Into the clubhouse turn. Broker's cash on the outside. Penman at the rail. Freedom Fella right there third. Leopard fourth. Brand new Fella in the contention fifth. Docks Fella sixth. Ombro Whiskey seventh. Bobo is eighth with New York Motoring and Whitey's Fella to the three quarters. Freedom Fella and Shelly Goudreau take the lead. 
Street. In between them, Brokers Cash. Brand new fella, three wide, three quarters, 126 and three. The third quarter, 29 and two. And in the final turn, Freedom Fella opening up three. Brand new fella trying to close ground. Ombro Whiskey in the outside. They've got an eighth of a mile to pace now. They turn for home. Freedom Fella goes for the classic record. They have three. Brand new fella, the outside, Ombro Whiskey. It's all Freedom Fella. Freedom Fella wins the classic. The time, 155 and four. As you so aptly put it, going for the classic record around the three quarter pole. At what point in the race did you yourself feel that Freedom Fella could achieve the record? At the three quarter pole, normally speaking, at Monticello, we have had some fast halves where they just don't seem to come home. But when he hit the three quarters from watching all these races, he was motoring. He was not uh, opening up three and trying to hang on. He was running away from him. And yeah. he had a full head of steam, there was no doubt. For those who didn't see the race, we should point out that brand new fella came in second. Armbro Whiskey came in third, but was placed fourth for a lap down break at the wire, and New York Motoring was placed third. Very alert move by, by Bill Popfinger, because when uh, Armbro Whiskey made a break, he saw it and he reached up and he just hit New York Motoring, and the horse just responded enough where he got up to his wheel and was lapped on. Now, in this race, there was one or two key spots one especially around the, the uh, eighth turn, the first turn. Uh, would you like to explain? We're going we're gonna to see okay. it on the instant replay. Well, one move, Shelley could have lost the race for himself. The other move, somebody won the race for him. Okay, so, explain what you mean. Okay, in very early part of the race, Shelley left out of there, and he's parked, and Warren Cameron is right behind him, and this is right around the eighth pole. Okay, if we can... Uh, Let's just call it up on the monitor for the uh, inside track instant replay. Okay, Jerry, just explain what you mean now. Okay, as they're leaving, Warren Cameron is leaving out of the six hole. Shelly Goudreau has the three. Penman is at the rail. Broker's Cash is on the outside. Now, as you're going to see, going around the turn, Broker's Cash takes the two hole. Now, he has thrown a shoe in that turn. But right there, Freedom Fella, fourth on the outside, he could take a hole. Right about here, he could have gone into the hole. If he takes that hole... Brand new fella comes up alongside of him, and Ombro Whiskey's in back, and he never gets out the rest of the mile. Now, here is where Clint won the race for Shelley, because he came out, and he gave him that cover. And that's now, the two-horse. Right. Now, even though he is still parked the mile, a good horse, this is, this is his breather, because he has the cover from just past the quarter pole until you'll see him make his three-wide move, passing the five-eighths. Now, when you say that he gave him cover, people have asked me from last week to this week, what does that mean, giving a horse cover? What does that do? What it is basically is a windshield, all right? It's just like in a track and field meet, you'll see a lot of guys will stay in the pack behind other runners because the wind is not hitting them. It's, it's less of an effort to go forward. And for a horse to be first over and the wind is hitting him, not only is he fighting time, he's fighting the horse alongside of him, but he's going against the wind. When you have a horse in front of you, it's a much more comfortable situation, takes less out of the horse. Now for our second inside track instant replay, let's take a look at the final turn around the three-quarter pole when Freedom Fella makes that ultimate move going three wide and just blows the field away. Blow them all out. Now, right there he goes three wide. Now here is where I say he is so much the best. Up until that point, brand new fella who was following him three wide was right on his helmet. But when he made his move, brand new fella could not accelerate with him. And Shelly just opened up three and a half on him. And I mean, there is just no chance. This is a good quality horse. Was and there he, any chance at all for brand new fella? Did you feel at all? If he had a chance, it had to be right here. The fact that he is not making up the ground right now, right around that turn, there was no shot. Was the move by Galbraith a surprising move to you? No, because he was sitting behind the worst horse in the race, and Galbraith's horse, who has won something like 8 for 10, has to have the lead. Every race he won is on the front end, and he figured that's his only shot. So, Freedom Fella, picked correctly by Jerry Glantz. Congratulations for picking the winner. For, congratulations for calling your third classic in a row. No one has ever called three classics in a row. Yes, I tried not to make it, <laughs> but as much as I drank all week, I was still there. Jerry Glantz once again showing you why he is the track announcer at Monticello yes. Raceway. Sounds like the professor. And we'll have more on the inside track. Right Made you a professor. Yeah. It's very tough today. Yeah. <laughs>